So we are keeping abreast of the new releases, the 35th anniversary of Battletech releases by Catalyst. We've got the head-to-head, or at least what I'm calling the head-to-head starter box. We've got the Game of Armored Combat, and now we have hex maps in two versions. And I have to say, my initial response was surprise on there, but in reflecting a little bit more, it kind of makes sense. So if you've been involved in Battletech for a while, if you've been playing since the dawn of time, hex maps in this kind of hybrid linen gloss cardboard that folds out well actually exactly like a board game hex map board game that's what you're used to for kind of the officially released maps they've got some heft to them they fold up and they work and you get a lot of use out of them so i was a little bit i've been anxious to get some updated hex maps um, with the art and kind of the elevation and a little bit more of a 3D representation on there. I think it's a really, I think the current hex maps are a great bridge between playing on a traditional war gaming table and having hex maps with a little bit more detail, a little bit more presence to it. I was surprised to see, I was expecting to see kind of the cardboard maps, but I was surprised to see the kind of neoprene mouse pad game mat, which is now ubiquitous in every type of gaming system that's out there, followed by paper maps. I was a little bit curious with the paper maps on there, simply because uh, this is the catalyst price on there. So what's street price? Five, ten dollars less? Um, Thirty dollars for essentially six paper maps that are going to fold. Okay, it's glossy stock. Um, It's obviously not printer paper, A4 white paper. It's got a little bit more bite to it. But my initial concern was, while, yes, the ultra portability of it, cram everything into that that Game of Armor combat set, the folding and unfolding over time, how how is that going to stand up? We're not talking about $10 or $15. Maybe if it was even $20. But $30 for foldable paper... I don't know. I guess I was a little bit shocked on there. But then if we look, and certainly there is a little bit of a bias here because I'm a Battletech fanboy, but understanding, or at least from what I understand with Catalyst, it is a very, very, very small shop. One-person team, okay, maybe like a four-person team on there. So managing production, managing the supply chain, managing the complexity and YouTube here is is interesting in terms of wargaming. It's almost like a sound chamber. I have to say, this is from someone being involved in the Warhammer 40,000 community, the historical community, and, and other gaming communities, D&D. I mean, D&D is massive. Um, on YouTube, the Battletech community, I think based on our size, is uh, very generous, very plugged in, a lot of great content. Battle reports, tactics, things that are being pushed out there. A lot of homebrew stuff with maps and mechs. If we just looked at the the signal noise on the internet, you would think Battletech is massive. I am under no illusion that Battletech is a very, very small kind of a couple of people playing in the back of the gaming shop and you can't really see what they're doing type affair as opposed to something so forward-facing like X-Wing Miniatures or Warhammer 40,000, which is this this massive juggernaut. So I understand the production resources in the here and now make things perhaps a little bit unobtainable if we look at the kind of traditional cardboard board game type maps. So maybe if that's the case, it makes sense to break it off and have one extreme or the other as opposed to something in the middle. Have some paper maps that look great, that fold up, that have the the narrative of the Game of Armored Combat set. And for those of us who want something a little bit more permanent, having that, that neoprene kind of mouse pad type stuff on there. But 30 bucks, I don't know. Not a criticism, but I guess we'll have to see... We'll have to see street date, and we'll see have to see how that releases. So on that note, and we're getting some new manuals, we're getting some new stuff, the, the question that's on everyone's mind, and the question that is on my mind, and we will get into this a little bit more in tomorrow's podcast, 
certainly the updated miniatures all look fantastic. I mean, look absolutely amazing. The fact that they are in plastics, which just makes the level of detail and, and painting uh, that much easier on there. I've seen a couple of posts on the Battletech forum where people with a jeweler's saw deconstructed every single mech, every single articulated joint, and have dynamically posed them. Um, you could never do that with metals, or I should say that that would be very, very challenging with metals. So the question on my mind is, are we going to get, when are we, and when are we going to get some of these new updated plastics for the mech out there? Can you imagine a Marauder? Can you imagine a Warhammer? I mean, just things that we, the unseen, that are reseen, that we never thought we would see again. The allure, the taste of having those in plastics, updated plastics. Uh, wow. So I'm, I'm hoping, and of course, Alpha Strike, looking at that, I'm hoping sooner rather than later, um, those will be able to push out. And from what I have seen so far, just in the community and uh, keeping track of online stores like Catalyst, keeping track of Miniature Market, keeping track of Amazon, um, Toy Wiz, a great group nearby, uh, the, kind of their store. The Battletech stuff has been selling out, and it's restocked, and it sells out, and it can't all be old, long-time players like myself. There has to be a good amount of, of new players on there. So I'm hopeful that Catalyst can see the enthusiasm and maybe with that enthusiasm and revenue and cash flow, not only keep these things in production, but possibly possibly look to release new mechs, push things in new directions, and maybe secure a line of funding to do that, whatever they have to do. Kickstarter, I would be all in on that. And I am, I am super skeptical. That's what's kept me alive for so long. Super skeptical when it comes to Kickstarter. I would, I would disregard all protocols and all rules to get in on that, on there. Even if it meant, well, not that I want to wait a year for delivery, plus delays a year and a half, but that's something that would be very, very interesting. So with that release schedule, the maps, what do you think? And the possibility of new mechs out there, what do you think should be next if Catalyst is indeed looking to roll this out and expand this out a little bit more? 